Today we're going to talk about how we find the distance between two points on a number line and then we're going to use that to help us find the distance between points on the coordinate plane. Okay, so make sure that you have your notes and you're following along with me. All right, starting at the top here, it says determine the distance between the two points on each number line. So if you're looking at the top number line, I'm going to call this point A and we'll call this one point B. If we wanna find the distance between these two points, there's basically two ways that we could do this. You could start at A and you could count how many units it takes to get from point A to point B. Okay, so here would be one, two, three, four, and then this is a half. So we could say it is four and a half units. All right, another way that we could find the distance is we could look at the absolute value for each of these points. So absolute value is the number's distance from zero. So here's zero. If I go down to point A, that's gonna be negative three or three units away from zero. And then if we go to point B, from zero to that point, we have one and a half. Okay, so three plus one and a half is gonna get us our four and a half units again. All right, take a look at the second one. Uh, for this one, so again, let's, well, we'll do C and point D. This time I'm gonna change my colors again. Okay, so point C, if we're just counting uh, units from one point to the next, Okay, this one, now both points are in between whole numbers. So we have zero, that means this line is gonna be negative one, negative two, this is negative three. I'm just gonna mark these out here to make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna look at my whole numbers first. Um, so here's one whole, two wholes, and three. Okay, and then we have like three and a half. So I guess I'm actually doing absolute value. Okay, so C has an absolute value of three and a half. Point D, I'm gonna call that three-fourths. So D is from zero to three-fourths. So we have three and a half plus three-fourths. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and you could add these as fractions, you could add them as decimals, whatever you prefer. Okay, but we would just have to add these together. Some of you may be able to add these without even um, doing this work like I'm doing, but I'm gonna make an equivalent fraction here so you guys can see. And this is actually five fourths, so we have six and five fourths, which means it would be seven and one fourth. You, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back it up. We all make mistakes, right? <laughs> it's not three and three fourths, it's just plain three-fourths. I thought that seemed like way too much. So anyways, back it up. That's why we use erasers. Okay, so we have three and a half plus three-fourths. So the only thing that's going to change is my whole number here though. So I have three and five-fourths, which makes it four and one-fourth units as their distance. Okay, if we're just counting from one point to the next, okay, from here to halfway, there's one whole I'll use a different color again. So that would be one whole, and then we go to the next halfway mark would be another, and here's another, and then we would go another. Okay, so we had one, two, three, four, and then we have this fourth left over here. Okay, so the two basic ways to find the distance would be to just count spaces from one point to the next, or you can add their absolute values uh, when you have one positive number and one negative number. Okay, here we go. The coordinate plane can be used to determine the blank and the blank between points. So we're gonna fill in here. We can use it to determine the distance and the direction between points. Okay, if you need to pause the video to write those in, go ahead and do that. Distance and direction. So down at the bottom here, use the coordinate plane to determine the distances and the direction between the points below. Okay, so by direction, we mean vertical or horizontal. Okay, so I'm gonna write these words over here to help you remember this. Vertical goes up and down. Vertical. And uh, horizontal goes side to side, like the horizon. 
horizontal. Okay, so maybe um, if that would be helpful for you to write those words on the side of your notes so you can remember uh, which is which. Here we go. We're going to look at our coordinate plane here. So we're looking at points A and D. All right. Here's point A, see it? And here's point D. Now, I think the horizontal and vertical is a quick and easy one. So those points would be vertical to each other. So I'm gonna put a V in here for vertical because they are up and down. Their distance, okay, if you zoom in here, um, like I said, we have a positive and we have a negative. So we could um, use their absolute values or we can count the spaces. I'm gonna count spaces here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so the distance would be seven units. Then we have B and F. Okay, here's B, oops, sorry, here's B and here's F. So again, those points are vertical and we're going to find the distance between them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and a half units between those two. Okay, I'm gonna let you continue doing this for the last three, so pause the video. You find the distance and the direction between the points, and then you can hit play to check and see if you got the correct answer. All right, let's keep going here. So if two points have the same x or y coordinate, then they lie on the same line of the coordinate plane. So sometimes just by looking at the ordered pair, you can tell if points are going to be on the same horizontal line or the same vertical line of the coordinate plane. Okay, let's take a look at our table here. So it says point one is located at zero, negative six, and point two is located at zero, nine. So what do those two points have in common? Well, they have the x coordinate in common. Okay, so I'm going to fill that in here. And then we want to try to figure out what the distance is between those two points. So we have a coordinate plane over here. We could actually graph these points. 0, negative 6. I'm going to zoom in again. 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, negative 6 is going to be right here. And then 0, 9 would be up here. Okay, so to find the distance, we went 9 units above and we went six units down, so nine plus six tells me that our distance would be 15 units. Okay, the next one, we have a point at eight, negative two, and we have a point at negative four, negative two. So now we have the y coordinate in common. Go ahead and fill that in. And we're trying to find the distance between these two points. Okay, so I'll change colors here. Maybe that'll help a little bit. 8, negative 2. So we find 8 on the x-axis and negative 2 on the y-axis. So that's going to be right here. And then our other number was at negative 4, negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2. I'm down here in the third quadrant. Okay, so this time they're on the same horizontal line and we went eight units this way and we have four units this way. So that means they are 12 units apart. Okay, so notice when the X coordinate is the same, the numbers or the points fall on the same vertical line. When the y coordinates were the same, they fall on the same horizontal line. Okay, for our next box, we have one point at 3, 6, and we don't know where the other point is, but we know they both have the same y coordinate. So remember, the y coordinate is the second number. So we're going to have something, comma, 6. And the points are 9 units apart. All right, so let's see if we can figure this one out. So let's put a point at 3, 6. 3, 6. 
is going to be right here. Okay, there's one point. And then we have to go, they're gonna have the same Y coordinate and they're going to be nine units apart. So if I'm here, my Y coordinate has to be six. So that means I have to go left or right on my X axis. Uh, and then I'm going to go up six and we want it to be nine units away. Okay, so if we think about that, I'm at three six, so that means to stay on the coordinate plane here, um, I am going to go, actually I guess we could go either direction, nine units, well it's gonna be better if we go to the left, nine units. Okay, so if we're at three, and we go one, two, Three, I'm back to zero and then I need to go six more units so I'm at negative six and then we'll go up six to keep the same Y coordinate okay so these points are nine units apart and they have the same Y coordinate my other point then is located at negative six six Okay, I want you to look at the, the information in the last two rows, use your coordinate plane, and see if you could figure out the missing information. Okay, so hit pause, do those, and then you will hit play to check your answers. Okay, hopefully you got some answers in for these. So, in the second to last row here, you can see there were two possible answers. You could have negative 8, negative 7 as point 1, or you could use negative 8 and, and positive 5, depending on if you go 6 units above point 2 or 6 units below point 2. Either or is fine. Okay, and then the last one, there's many different answers that you could have. You just had to have the same Y coordinate, okay, which could be anything. And then your X coordinates should be 15 units apart. So I did negative 5 and positive 10. Um, but there's, again, lots of different possibilities that you could have there. Okay, if you're not sure, feel free to ask during class. All right, last thing here, guys. We're going to create a rectangle below with a perimeter of 20 units and an area of 24 units. So remember, when we're talking about a rectangle, the perimeter is the distance around the outside. So to find the perimeter, you add all four sides together. Area is the space on the inside, and to find the area, we have to do length times width. Okay, so I'll just write that area equals length times width, perimeter equals length plus length plus width plus width. Okay, so we have two points here, A and B. It says create a rectangle that has a perimeter of 20 units and an area of 24 units. So first of all, let's figure out how far it is from A to B. So we're at 0, 5, and uh, negative 6, 5. So that means these two are 6 units apart from 0 to negative 6. So if the side is 6, I'm going to go with, uh, um, I'm going to think about the area here. So 6 times 4 is going to get me to 24. Okay, so if I make my short sides of my rectangle 4 units, then I would have 6 plus 6 is 12, and 4 plus 4 is 8, and 12 plus 8 will give me 20 for a perimeter of 20. Okay, so I found the distance between these two points, figured out what I would have to multiply that by to get the area, and then we can go ahead and draw that in. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to need one point here, and one, two, three, four. Whoops, that's a terrible line. So we'll have one point here, and then that will be our rectangle. 24 square units as the area, and 24, I'm sorry, 20 units as the perimeter all the way around. Okay, you guys try the last one on your own. Pause it and then hit play to check.